Hey, this is Angie Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at Trusted Advisor, which advises you on security, saving money, performance, uh, service limits, and fault tolerance. The reason I have that uh, saving money in red is because we are looking at billing and pricing, okay? And for Trusted Advisor, uh, for every single account, uh, you're going to get for free seven Trusted Advisor checks. If you have either business or enterprise support, you're going to get all Trusted Advisor checks. And an easy way of thinking what Trusted Advisor is, is think of it as an automated checklist for best practices on AWS. So Trusted Advisor um, has five different categories where it can advise you on, and it has uh, checks. And these are all the checks uh, that are possible um, that are at the uh, paid tiers, okay? For the uh, free tier, uh, there's quite a few less. Uh, I honestly can't remember what they are, so I'm not gonna show them here to you. Um, and we're just gonna focus on the full list here going through each category. So first looking at cost optimization where you're gonna be able to save money. The two most common ones where uh, it will recommend you on is idle load balancers and unassociated EIP. So for idle load balancers, the, uh, so if you spin up an elastic load balancer, the minimum cost per month is $15, okay? But let's say you just don't happen to have any EC2 instances that are being balanced on there. It's going to say, hey, this load balancer is not doing anything. Maybe you should uh, get rid of it to save some money. Another one is uh, EIPs. So that's Elastic IP addresses, okay? And so uh, the idea is that if you have an EC2 instance and you want to give it a static IP, uh, you can uh, 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 reserve an, EI, uh, an EIP from AWS. Uh, but the thing is, is that if it's not attached to an EC2 instance, it's unassociated, it costs you money because AWS wants you to release that, uh, that IP address so someone else can use it. Uh, so that's a recommendation it will make to you. Looking at performance, uh, let's say we look at high utilization Amazon EC2 instances. So for that one, I believe that uh, it's, let's say you have a very high CPU usage on an on EC2 instance, it's going to say, hey, maybe you should use a larger instance, okay, to get better performance out of this, um, this machine here, okay? Now for security, we have MFA on root account. Um, and this is uh, not only Trust Advisor tells you to do this, but so many other AWS services tell you to do it because it's such a uh, important security measure within your AWS account. Another thing could be I am access key rotation. So you have uh, access keys that are used by uh, users and it might suggest, hey, it's time to rotate these out to make sure things stay secure, okay? So uh, looking at the last two categories, we have fault tolerance and service limits. So for fault tolerance, uh, it would recommend, so let's say something for RDS backups, okay? So just to make sure that uh, you have backups in place or have them turned on. So uh, in the case that your database goes down, you can uh, recover it okay uh, and then you have service limits um, and there's none in particular chosen here but uh, there are limitations on the certain amount of things that you can use and AWS allows you to increase those limits uh, so it's just kind of like a safeguard for AWS but you're allowed to go beyond that uh, I guess a really good one would be SCS so SCS allows you to send out emails and probably by default it, it caps you at like 5,000 or 10,000 emails and if you had to go beyond that you would ask for a service limit increase okay so those are all the checks there uh, and the five categories to give you an idea of what Trust Advisor could help you with.